As far as budget Android tablets go, they don't get much better than the Samsung Tab S7 FE. Smooth performance, the S Pen, great battery life, great display, and even some decent cameras. However, seeing as the Tab S7 FE is about two years old now and still costs about $400, does the overall experience justify the asking price? and I will leave links in the description below for the best pricing on the Tab S7 FE. Given that the Tab S7 FE has been out for quite some time and we already have the Tab S9 FE and Tab S9 FE Plus, horrible name, I know. I'm going to be highlighting what's so great about the Tab S7 FE during daily use and what is holding it back. But before that, let's take a trip down memory lane. Tablets never seemed like that great of an idea to begin with. They were too big to fit in your pocket, they did not have a physical keyboard like a laptop, and holding one up to your ear to take a phone call just made you look like a lunatic. However, with the ever-increasing popularity of the iPad, Android users have been looking for a similar experience that runs just as well with their operating system, and time after time, they are often disappointed. And while the hunt is still on for an Android tablet which delivers just as much value as the iPad, if not more, no company has come closer to achieving this goal than Samsung. The Tab S8 Ultra was widely regarded as the ultimate iPad killer by many in 2022, and the Tab S9 Ultra kept that legacy going this year. But with an asking price of $1200 for the base Tab S9 Ultra, a lot of people simply can't afford to get it. And that's pretty much why today we're taking a look at the Tab S7 FE and why I think it's still the perfect budget tablet for productivity, work, and some other tasks. Of course, one reason a lot of people buy tablets is so they have a bigger screen which they can use to watch their favorite shows, movies, and even content creators. And just like on the flagship Samsung smartphones, the content consumption experience on the Tab S7 FE leaves little or nothing to be desired. You have 12.4 inches of screen real estate to enjoy videos on, the quality of the display is pretty good as well, despite it having a TFT panel instead of the Super AMOLED typically seen on Samsung flagships. The TFT panel doesn't mean the viewing experience is any worse. Colors look great, decently balanced, and well saturated. It's also got a resolution of 1600 by 2560. The only complaint I can think of when it comes to the display would probably be the refresh rate. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not choppy or anything, it's actually quite smooth most of the time, but I think this device could definitely benefit from the extra smoothness of a 120Hz display. But a 60Hz display definitely isn't the end of the world. The content consumption experience isn't just about what you see when you're watching videos, as audio plays a very important aspect as well, and the Tab S7 FE handles audio quite splendidly. It's got a dual speaker setup, tuned by AKG, and the speakers function in stereo with one another to deliver a loud, crisp, and immersive listening experience. Here's a sample of what the speakers sound like. Tab S7 FE and the Samsung Tab S6 Lite. These are two budget-friendly tablets from Samsung. They have a mid-range processor, not a lot of RAM. Now, before we get into the build quality, performance, and other aspects of the Tab S7 FE, this video was brought to you by me. So as you can imagine, a lot of time and efforts went into producing this video and if you've been enjoying it this far, then please like the video, leave a comment below and if you really want to support me, then consider subscribing to the channel as well. Arigatou gozaimasu. The Tab S7 FE is made of aluminum on the sides and on the back. Now this allows you to magnetically attach your S Pen to any side of the tablet and directly underneath the camera bump on the back of the tablet as well. There's also a 3-pin connector on the left side of the tablet and you can use that to connect smart accessories like the Samsung keyboard case. When it comes to performance, unlike the Tab S6 Lite which I've spoken about multiple times on my channel, you hardly find yourself waiting when it comes to the Tab S7 FE. While it's definitely not as fast as the flagship tablets like the S7 or the S8, it definitely isn't slow or laggy. It comes with the Snapdragon 750G chipset and 4, 6, or 8GB of RAM, depending on the storage configuration you go for. Mine has 64GB of storage and 4GB of RAM, so it can't keep too many apps open in the background and often refreshes them after some time has passed. However, irrespective of the modest RAM size on this tablet, it still handles everyday tasks very well, and you can even get away with some gaming. Of course, if you try to play intensive games like Genshin Impact while leaving multiple apps open in the background, 
then something like this might happen. What exactly is wrong with this thing? Why isn't this working? But if you keep your expectations realistic, you'll have a great time with this tablet. And if you eventually run into some performance issues, then I made a video on 10 ways to make your Android tablet run faster. So you can check it out after you're done watching this video. Aside from watching videos, gaming, and scrolling through social media, tablets are incredibly important to a lot of people as productivity devices. Plugging the Tab S7 FE to an external monitor gives you the option of using Samsung DeX, which is a more complete desktop experience with a Windows-style file explorer, floating windows, desktop mode apps and websites, and etc., all powered directly from your tablet. <coughs> iPad users. <coughs> If you get the keyboard cover case, you've got a mini laptop which you can throw into your bag and take wherever you go. For lectures, meetings and the like, you get a more efficient way to take notes, send emails and etc with just your tablet and the keyboard case or even just a regular Bluetooth keyboard. But speaking of taking notes, let's take a look at one feature which makes the Tab S7 FE and Samsung tablets in general stand out, and that is the S Pen. If you've seen any of my previous videos like how I take notes on the Tab S6 Lite as a medical student or why I use the Tab S6 Lite, you'll know how useful I find the S Pen and that doesn't change with the Tab S7 FE. The pen of the Tab S7 FE is a similar size to a regular pen and while it's a bit lighter, it's still quite comfortable to use. If you're a student and taking handwritten notes is your thing, for this price point, you can't get much better than the Tab S7 FE and the S Pen when it comes to Android tablets. The low latency of the S Pen and the responsive display make each stroke feel smooth and satisfying. That's what she said. <laughs> but just like the Tab S6 Lite, the S Pen of the Tab S7 FE does not feature Bluetooth functionality. So the button on the S Pen only serves as an eraser when you're taking notes. And as for the artist out there, while the S Pen is not able to detect variable levels of pressure or change modes by tapping on the side like the Apple Pencil, it is definitely still no slouch as an artistic tool. But hey, if you're still watching the video at this point, then you are amazing. Leave a pen icon or a pen uh, emoji in the comment section below. With the right app, you can still bring your artistic vision to life using the Tab S7 FE and the S Pen. While the most renowned digital art app Procreate isn't available for Android, there are a few other alternatives to explore, and even the stock Samsung Notes and Pen Up apps are so feature-packed, you would definitely be able to come up with some brilliant pieces with them. And the icing on the cake with regards to the S Pen is that it comes bundled with your tablet you're able to take full advantage of all its capabilities from the get-go, which isn't the same case with the Apple Pencil, which you need to buy separately. Okay, so we've said a lot about how great the content consumption experience on this device is, with the great screen, solid speakers, and good performance, and we already know how much of a productivity beast this thing can be. But there is no point to all this power if it can't go the distance, right? With a 10,090 mAh battery and up to 45 watts of fast charging, I think the Tab S7 FE has what it takes when it comes to endurance. And while it is completely possible to kill the battery in a day, perhaps with multi-hour gaming sessions, it is not an easy feat to achieve, which is a testament to just how good the battery life on this device is. The Tab S7 FE features a single 8 megapixel rear camera and it's quite decent, at least in good lighting. It's capable of capturing balanced and moderately detailed photos. Of course, the cameras are also there if you need to scan documents and so on, and you also have the front facing 5 megapixel selfie camera. It's mounted on the side bezel as opposed to the top, signifying that this tablet was made to be used more often in landscape mode. The camera is there for video calls and yeah, pretty much just video calls. I don't really see any sense in holding up your 12.4 inch tablet to take a casual selfie with your friends in the park. The front facing camera is also there for 2D face unlocking, which is the only form of biometric security the Tab S7 FE has. And that's a shame because for $400, Samsung could have easily added an optical fingerprint scanner under the display and we would have a proper means of biometric authentication on the tablet. The face unlock is convenient at times. It helps you get into the Tab S7 FE quickly, at least when it's able to recognize your face, 
which usually requires quite a bit of lighting. But when it works, it's a pretty nice option to have available and is certainly faster than typing in a pin or using a pattern to unlock your device. While this Hub S7 FE has seemed great so far, and it actually is, it certainly is not perfect. You still get the occasional app incompatibility issue, Auto rotate is still quite slow and there might be some performance stutters here and there. However, they are few and far between, with most of the issues being due to software bugs and the majority of them have already been fixed via one of the multiple updates the Tab S7 FE has received. All in all, the Tab S7 FE is still an amazing offering from Samsung. It ticks most if not all the boxes a regular person would want from their tablet. The main factor which could discourage someone from getting this tablet would be the price with the base tab S7 FE still coming in at about $400 brand new, especially considering the fact that the new tab S9 FE comes in at $450 and the tab S9 FE Plus comes in at $600. And with those devices, you get a 90Hz display, a newer and better processor with the Exynos 1380, 6GB of RAM on the base model, and an in-display fingerprint scanner as well. So it doesn't really make sense to get the Tab S7 FE for $400 when you can get a much better device in the Tab S9 FE for just $50 more, right? Well, this is where the power of pre-owned devices comes in, as you can get a refurbished Tab S7 FE on Amazon for just $300, and you might even be able to find some pre-owned units probably on eBay for around 250 But would I recommend getting the Tab S7 FE for $400? Definitely not. I got mine for closer to 350 or 330 I don't even remember. But if you have a budget of between 350 to $400, then I would recommend just adding $50 more or $100 more as the case may be and get the Tab S9 FE. However, if $450 or $400 is a bit too steep of an asking price, Perhaps you're a student or you have a very tight budget and you aren't necessarily looking for the most specced out tablet, then by all means you can go ahead and purchase a pre-owned or refurbished Tab S7 FE or you could always go for the Tab S6 Lite, which is still a great option and even got a refreshed version with a new processor in 2022. I've made a couple of videos talking about this tablet already, so you can check them out on my channel. So, do you think you'll be getting the Tab S7 FE or maybe even the Tab S9 FE? Let me know in the comments below. And if you already have an Android tablet that's beginning to run a little bit slower, then I'll catch you in this video where I talk about 10 ways to make your Android tablet run faster. Or I'll just see you in the next video. Peace.